Hello and welcome to another Hot Rodster review. In this video, I'll be continuing my blind review of the series, My Hero Academia Vigilantes, by reviewing the School Days arc. It was a really quick seven chapters as it started on chapter 59 and ended on chapter 65. This arc was very different from the others as it took place in the past, where we follow Shoto Aizawa's journey to heroism. And you ought to follow my ascent to greatness by clicking that subscribe button in order to get all of the Hot Rodsters Vigilante reviews right into your subscription feed. With that being said, let's get into the review. So I have very mixed feelings about this arc. If you watch my previous reviews, then you can probably guess where my frustrations lie. So what I plan to do is first talk about everything I like and then talk about everything that I didn't like. For starters, I really like that we got to see the origins of Eraserhead as he has always been an interesting character to me and probably to most of the entire fan base. Getting some insight as to how he grew into who he is now in the main series was something that definitely helped me to understand his character. He used to smile more. He had so much hope and dreams, but all of that came to an end when his friend, Oboro died while fighting a giant monster villain. After that event, I could see a really clear shift in his general demeanor. He just seemed so much more detached from everyone, including his greatest friends. I noticed that towards the beginning, it seemed like he was learning how to work more efficiently in a team. He was able to use his quirk with Oboros in order to quickly take down their blaster classmate in a training exercise, and he saw that as a good accomplishment. He and his friends vowed that together they would create a hero agency with Sushi being the resident cat. It made it completely clear that he valued these connections and their teamwork, but like I said earlier, Oboros' death caused everything to change. His goal changed from working with others to being an independent underground hero who specializes in anti-villain combat. He said, and I quote, that's the sort of hero I meant to be. This line said so much and so little. It implied that his quirk wasn't cut out for working with other heroes nor protecting civilians. It was only good for taking down villains by himself. However, this obviously wasn't the case as we've seen him work beautifully with other people. It was implied that the true reason why he didn't want to work with others was because he couldn't stand the thought of losing someone close to him again. And that is heartbreaking. In chapter 65, we see him work and train so hard to be the best possible with his ultimate goal being no longer having to work with others. Another depressing thing to think about was that Obaro may have actually survived and that he was really cheering on Aizawa to take down the giant monster villain. Since if you've caught up to the anime, you'd know that his body was used to create Kurogiri, the warp gate villain. It was stolen by All for One to do so. I may be remembering this incorrectly, but I think I remember Aizawa saying that his body was never found. So like I said, Oboro may have actually been cheering Aizawa on, but then got kidnapped by All for One and or died from blood loss after the fact. Either way, it was a really tragic event and I would dare say that it was the saddest death of the entire franchise. This was the first time we actually saw a kid die, which also kind of adds way more stakes when I see these children go on dangerous missions. On a more lighthearted note, I really liked seeing Midnight in this story, and I specifically loved the reference to the Emperor's New Clothes story when Aizawa bluntly stated, some high-tech material that's invisible to idiots? The queen has no clothes. That kind of smart comedy is right up my alley. Not to say that I don't like more idiotic forms of comedy though. I thought that it was so wholesome to see Midnight offer to take care of the cat and to see that she was still taking care of Sushi in present day. But what I really liked was the end of this arc. One of the last panels on chapter 65 implied that Aizawa was learning to move on a bit. I believe that he was leaving Naruhata in order to find his purpose as a teacher at UA in that panel. Just seeing him smile and say that he would come back to check on the new cat every once in a while demonstrated some kind of growth and I loved it. Okay. I guess now it's time for my criticism, which is that the inclusion of this arc in this manga felt kind of random. Don't get me wrong, I liked seeing it, but I don't know why it's in this series when it's actually more relevant to the main series. I said multiple times in previous reviews that I do not like that Koichi was being pushed out of the role of protagonist and was low-key becoming a side character, and in this arc he undoubtedly was a side character. Now if all of this backstory actually ends up being more relevant to this specific series as opposed to the main series, then I would be okay with it. Not to mention, the whole concept of this manga was that it was supposed to be a focus on vigilantism. However, this arc didn't feature any of that. I just feel like the manga isn't focusing on what it should be focusing on, and I hope that is an issue that gets resolved in future arcs. Overall, I don't have any issues with the actual story itself, I just don't see its relevancy in the grand scheme of things. It kinda seemed like the authors put Aizawa's backstory in this manga just to generate publicity for it. Like if you want to know more about this fan favorite, check out the Vigilantes manga because important things get revealed. I'm still excited to hop back into this story. The last arc left me wondering what exactly was going to happen to Koichi. Is someone stalking him? Is he going to be attacked? 
He said the next time the danger would come to him all on its own. I need to know what that means. I guess the only way to find out is to keep on reading. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been The Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.